Hello, this is Jonathan at Robotics, and today I'll be providing an introduction to PID control for your Dynamixel system. PID control, short for Proportional, Integral, and Derivative Control, is the most common control loop implementation for automated process control. In our specific case of robotics, PID control can help us tune our actuators for improved performance, smoothness, or any other movement characteristic important for our use case. This tutorial will explain what motion component each of the three parameters of PID control corresponds to, so that you have an idea of what to adjust to achieve the type of motion you need for your application. Before we get started, I'd like to provide a quick description of each of the parameters used in PID control systems. If you'd like to learn more about a specific parameter for PID control, feel free to skip to the section of the video focusing on the information that you need. First is the P, or proportional gain. This can easily be thought of as a way to specify the aggressiveness of the actuator in seeking its goal position. The second parameter is I, or integral gain. This sets the servo's adjustment behavior in order to correct for errors over time. Higher I gain will correspond to more aggressive adjustments over shorter times. And third is the D, or derivative gain. This value dampens or smooths out the application of the previous two values. This allows for finer tuned adjustments when used alongside the other parameters. With that brief introduction out of the way, we can start with the lesson at hand. Let's begin with a quick demonstration of the behavior of dynamics with default values for PID gain, which are dynamics X series actuators is 800 P gain, 0 I gain, and 0 D gain. As this video continues, I will explain what effect adjusting each of these values will have on the motion of your actuator. But for now, let's see what the motion looks like at default settings. As you can see, default settings produce a very stiff, or robotic, motion profile, with a sudden start at the beginning of the movement and a similarly sudden stop once the goal position has been reached. This default behavior is acceptable for many applications, but adjusting PID gains can allow you to achieve smoother overall motion or adjust the profile for improved safety, performance, or reliability. Now, let's take a look at Dynamixel Wizard and adjust these settings to see how they affect the performance of our Dynamixel. Feel free to follow along with these tests at home using your own Dynamixel actuator. The proportional gain is a measure of the actuator's response to the difference between the goal position and its actual position. In other words, the aggressiveness of seeking the goal position. A higher number means that the actuator will more aggressively attempt to correct any difference between its current position and its goal position. Let's set the peak gain to 80 for now and observe changes in the movement behavior of the actuator. Now we can see that the actuator still begins the motion aggressively, but as it approaches the goal position, it begins to reduce its output force as the difference between the goal position and current position decreases. With this low peak gain value, if you take a look at the final stopping position, you'll find that the actuator actually comes to rest just slightly short of our desired goal. The actuator reduces its movement to zero when the difference between the current position and goal position becomes too small. If we instead adjust our P gain to 8000, we'll see that the robotic motion profile from before has been magnified a hundredfold. The initial acceleration is still very aggressive, and now the actuator continues to move at maximum speed until it arrives exactly at the goal position, where it stops again immediately. With this higher value, the final resting position is also exactly on the goal, as the actuator doesn't begin decreasing its movement until it's arrived exactly where specified. With that in mind, we can see that changing this value allows us to modify how quickly the actuator adjusts its position based on how far away it is from its goal, with higher values corresponding to more aggressive movement at closer positions to the goal. It's also useful to know that setting this a little too low may result in the actuator stopping just short of our desired goal position. If you're following along with your own Dynamixels, be sure to reset your PID settings to default before the next section. The integral gain is a measure of the actuator's response to error over time. Higher values would cause the actuator to more aggressively resolve smaller differences between the current position and the goal more quickly. This can be useful in combination with lower peak gain values as it allows the servo to attempt to correct itself when it stops short or overshoots the goal position. To demonstrate, set the peak gain to 80 and observe the actuator stopping just short of the desired goal. 
Now, if we set the eye gain to 1000, rather than stopping movement just short of the goal position, the servo will oscillate back and forth as it attempts to correct the small difference between the goal position and its actual stopping point. This oscillation is the most common symptom displayed in systems where the eye gain is set too high. Let's adjust the P gain back to the default of 800. Now, the oscillating movement is gone, and if we pay attention to the actual positions of the actuator, we can see that while it does not immediately arrive at our specified goal, the actuator continues to make tiny adjustments until it arrives exactly where specified. This allows us to see that the eye gain specifies how aggressively the actuator responds to attempt to correct errors like overshooting or stopping short. And it's important to note that an incorrect eye gain value can result in these oscillations around the goal due to repeated overcorrections. If you're following along with your own Dynamics rules, be sure to reset your PID settings to the default before the next section. The derivative gain can best be described as a smoothing or depthing effect applied to P and I gains in order to create a more smooth motion profile and reduce the likelihood and effect of any overcorrection or other errors. In order to see the effect of adjusting the D gain, let's set P gain to 80 and I gain to 1000. With these settings, the actuator will oscillate around the desired goal position as it repeatedly overshoots and attempts to correct itself. If we set D gain to 10,000, you'll notice that the initial movement, as well as the oscillation as the actuator attempts to reach its goal, have slowed down significantly. The D gain has modified both P and I gains to reduce the intensity of their effect on the motion of the actuator. While this example in particular produces motion that may be undesirable in a final application, adjusting the D gain in your application can be used to adjust the intensity of P and I gains to better allow for fine-tuned control of movement than either gain by themselves. That's everything that you need to know about PID control in order for you to start tuning the movement of your Dynamissile system. If you'd like more detailed information, you can check out our email or visit the Robotics Community Forum to discuss it with other members of the community. This has been Jonathan of Robotics, and I look forward to building more with you soon.